What's up guys? So there's a bit going on today. We should be getting three parts in the mail. Uh, I'm not too sure whether I want to break it up into two different videos and give some reviews on those parts. I probably will, but for now, I'm just going to run through what I've done to the engine base since I last spray painted it. So as you can see, I've already decided to put on the front rear bar that goes across the front there. I've chucked this hood latch on. I gave that a look of paint as well, just spray painted black satin. I'm not too sure if that's meant to go through there because I know that the headlight actuator sits around here and that might be in the way. So I may need to take that off of the hood latch and duck it behind to come through here, behind that um, uh, rad support. And then if we go inside the engine bay, you'll see I've already bolted up the engine cross member. Um, if you can remember from the last video at the end, I mentioned I was going to the paint supply store to get the color mixed up in a spray can this time. That was for little things like this. Um, I didn't want that in black, like I spray painted the cross member. I wanted it in the same color that I spray painted the engine bay, just so it ties in and you can, because I don't want it to be seen. I don't want it to stand out. Um, the same thing with these um, little inlet things for the engine bay on the sides here. I'm not too sure what they're for. I've also bolted in the clutch master cylinder. That looks pretty nice in there. The outlet comes out from the bottom, so it goes straight down, which will be nice because it can just go straight down into the, um, the gearbox tunnel there and I won't be able to see it at all, any hard lines. And as I mentioned before, there's three parts coming today, two of which are from GK Tech and one of them goes right here. It's called the Brake Booster Delete Kit and it basically gets rid of the factory brake booster that sits right there. It's really big, it's really ugly, takes up a lot of room. Anyway, that basically deletes it. Which also leads me to my second part that I bought from GK Tech, which is the Willwood Standalone 7 8 of an inch brake master cylinder. It'll go straight on top of that. And the third part that I bought that should be coming today is a new radiator. Now, I'm not too sure on the brand because I've heard mixed reviews about it, but to be honest, I just want a radiator to chuck in there to get the coolant flowing through the engine so I can just get it running because um, I'm not going to be pushing hella amount of power through just yet. So yeah, as I said, I just wanted to get in there um, just to get it running and then I can go from there. But I will be doing an unboxing and a review on it just to give you guys a little bit more insight. So what I have here next to me is a radiator from Whirly Auto Parts down in Melbourne, Australia. Um, the shipping was really fast, came up within two days. Uh, let's dive straight into the unboxing and review. Let's go open it up. So as you can see, they've done a nice job of packaging. It's surrounded by styrofoam and it's wrapped in a plastic bag. Let's go ahead and pull it out. Okay, so here in front of you, you have a 52 millimeter three row Whirly radiator to suit an a SR20 DET S13 or 180SX. Now, their ad um, implies that the radiator is heavy duty designed and that the cooling capacity is increased by around 40% than the factory radiator. Okay, so let's uh, take a closer look. First up, I like how they've plugged up the inlet and outlet ports to the radiator just to prevent anything from getting in there while transporting it. Um, secondly, it's kind of hard not to notice how shiny it is and all the welds, they're welded by TIG. Um, but then again, that's the outside and the outside can look all fine and dandy, but all the actions on the inside. They claim that the core of the radiator is welded in a vacuum brazed furnace uh, with no epoxy. Going back to these inlet and outlet pipes, because I think I forgot to mention at the start, um, is that both top and the bottom are 35 millimeter um, in diameter, just if you wanted to size anything up for your reference. We can probably even take a closer look inside as well. I don't know if you can really see, but the welding in there does look all right, but I guess the only way to really find out if it'll hold up is to get some coolant running through it.
So I've just gone ahead and chucked the radiator in place. From the outside, it looks pretty good. Um, the radiator sits just below the radiator support, which is nice and neat. But if we take a closer look and I push this backwards, you'll notice that down the bottom there, it's closer to the left-hand side than it is on the right-hand side. The difference is about 10 mil. I'm not too sure if it's the actual locators on the bottom of this radiator or if it's binding on the radiator support there down the bottom. Let's check out these locators on the bottom here. On the right hand side, the locator seems to be more towards the back of the hole. Whereas on this left hand side, the locator seems to be more towards the front of the hole. Which actually is a good thing because that tells me that the radiator itself isn't twisted and that's just my radiator support that needs a bit of touch up. So that's all it ended up being. I used my trusty adjustment tool and if you have a look down the bottom there now, it's even from left to right and at the top, it's nice and even from left to right. So taking a look now from inside the engine bay, just um, try to ignore this, all this here. I found out how fragile this stuff is. Uh, when you're installing it, just try not do what I just did and put pressure on those rows. Um, down the bottom here, this outlet pipe is cutting it pretty close to this arm. So what I'll probably end up doing is putting a rubber grommet in between that and raising it up a tiny bit, just to give me some more room with the piping onto that outlet. So that there is the Whirly Radiator and there's one thing left to mention which I almost forgot because it didn't come with it, they must have forgot it, that this was actually a package deal and it comes with all the silicon um, hosing and radiator piping that you need to install it and it's nowhere to be seen. So I'm gonna give them a message and find out where it's at because for $180 all up, including the, the piping and the radiator, I couldn't not go for it, especially because I'm mainly gonna be using it temporarily while I get the car running. But that's about it. I hope this has helped you. If it has, leave a like. If you have any questions, put a comment down below. And if you wanna see more videos, subscribe to my channel. On the next video, you'll probably see me do a review of the Brake Booster Delete Kit and an install of the Brake Master Cylinder. But until then, take it easy.